All right. I was all set to go to bed, and I um, then saw a poll by Bloomberg on their YouTube page. And I tried posting a comment on the section on the poll, but my comment kept getting deleted, so I'm just going to do a video and talk about student loans. So the Bloomberg poll asked, should student loans be forgiven completely for everybody? Should they be only forgiven for some people? Or should they be partly forgiven for everybody? And the option, should they do nothing about it, wasn't on there. Now, I read that is they have to do something about it, and they know that they have to do something about it. Because so many student loans right now are, just aren't performing. Like, um, before COVID hit, everybody seemingly was on an income-based repayment plan. And you paid what you could when you could. And that clearly wasn't working. And then COVID hit, and then they started saying, okay, you don't have to pay anything. We'll just reopen the whole thing after COVID's over. And I don't think they can. And I believe these loans that kids took out for school are every bit as toxic as the housing um, bubble was in 2008. Because basically what you have was... Um, you have kids who were promised an education that would better their station in life. And likewise, in 2007, 2008, you had home aspiring homeowners who, if they signed on the dotted lines, would get a house and better their station in life. And I view the student loan bubble and the housing bubble is ultimately caused by the same thing. And, I mean, people can say we shouldn't do anything about it all they want, but um, we have to do something because you have a whole generation that if they have to actually start paying their loans in full, then there's going to be a revolt because such a large percentage of young people have unmanageable amounts of student debt. And I look at where I work and... Half the people there are just coming out of college, and they have their bachelors in quantum physics, biology, environmental science, kinesiology, name it. And they're not able to put their degrees to work. So these degrees are advertised as assets, but they're really liabilities. And... When you look at how student loans are put together for um, any one student, it's not based on merit. It's not based on should you be in college at all. It's based on how much do your parents make? How many student loans did your siblings already get already? I lost a work study once because my sister was getting the financial aid, not me. So the fact they took my sister into consideration... Um, and that deprived me of a work study. And that there tells me no. No. Like, you're, you're, I mean, if you're a good student, you're smart, you should be in college. That's who goes. And I, I mean, but then you have to like, oh, but people who are poor or don't have as good a station in life, um, it's harder to prepare for college and, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a fair argument. But by the time you're in high school, the time for college prep, that's long since passed. And what really should be happening is we should be investing in our high schools and not in student loans. Because by the time you come out of high school, you should have a skill set that you can live off of so that college is not, um, it's optional. College should be optional, it should not be mandatory.
and particularly four-year college, should not be mandatory. Now, a lot of things you can do in a community college, like you can get a good understanding of, um, like, a good introduction to, like, art, history, and you can pursue passions that way in community college if that's what you want to do. And community colleges are inexpensive, really, by compar in comparison to four-year schools where you live there. And it's just college is this all-or-nothing thing now. And we've completely forgotten about, like, work ethic and all the little things that actually make up a life. And, like, real-world experience is something high schoolers are not getting. They're just sitting in school, and they're being given a liberal arts education in things like civics class, shop class, um, painting, art, music, anything that's not hardcore STEM is being cut out. And when it comes right down to it with like STEM, all you really need to prepare to go into engineering, physics, and that is a good education in mathematics, physics, and some biology or chemistry. And that will get you up to just the minimum um, college level courses because like so many courses in the sciences are so standardized that you can take physics one, physics two anywhere and move it to a different institution. And high school could easily teach these courses, very easily. And I think that really shows the college system that it's um, it's really just putting a feather in the hat of the kids of the 1%. That's all it is. And I think student loans should be forgiven. just Because these kids are so young coming out of high school that they don't understand what they're signing up for. They don't understand that minimum wage is just going to keep going up, but the entry level pay for a biology major is always going to be like 1750. I've not seen much compression in the pay scale the past couple of years and like here in Massachusetts minimum wage has gone up to 15 and a biology major or environmental science or physics major coming out is going to make 1650 1750 and if you get like one promotion where you work from like crew person up to like any level of management then you're going to get the pay bump up to what you would have gotten coming right out of college well, if you come out of college, you probably aren't going to have the work experience. <laughs> and you'll have the loans on top of it. And I just I just can't in good conscience tell people today, go to college. No. No. If you want to learn, go to, go to used bookstores. Not Barnes & Noble used bookstores because you'll find everything there like there's gray matter books over in Hadley and then there's um like Tim's books in like Amherst and Northampton the because new like Barnes and Noble everything there is so sanitized so politically correct a precious not even about being politically correct it's just all the books there look at everything the same way, and you don't actually see conflicting points of view. And that's what I think this college thing is really about. It's about making kids all think alike. In, in high school, 
the, how many kids are being pulled into the high school guidance counselor's office and told, just sign here on the dotted line? Sure, it's only $40,000, $60,000 a year. But you could buy a small house for that price after four years. Now, granted, housing, I don't know where you can buy a house for under $200,000 anymore. I mean, that's another whole thing. And like, I think we're in another housing bubble right now. Because um, you got the older generation who told the kids go to college and jack the tuition rates up. And then the older generation um, has been jacking up the rent prices, prices, jacking up the housing prices, and it's all to pay for their retirement. And it, it's, it's intergenerational theft. Because you've got these kids who are wasting the, some of the best years of their life on a degree that might ultimately hinder them in the long run. And it's destroying um, community and sustainable relationships. Now, I'm really big into the environment and protecting um, our land base and our resources and, cons and environmental conservation. And at the heart of all that is sustainable relationships and High school does not teach that, and student loans, or it's not sustainable, and it's not it's not fair to ask these kids to pay back loans that they can't. It's in violation of the Thirteenth Amendment. It's um, it's slavery. The moment you can't discharge a debt in bankruptcy, that is slavery. I mean, I don't know what, I can't think of anything else you could call it. It's indentured servitude, or sl it's slavery. And I think I, if, if you call it slavery, I think it's striking down the, um, Prohibition on discharging student loans and bankruptcy could be accomplished using the 13th Amendment. And you have kids out there who are trying to pay and trying to pay. And they just can't. They just can't make a dent in it. Because you have, um, the minimum payment on some of these loans is effectively makes it so that you'll never actually pay it off. And when you look at a lot of mortgages today, it's the same thing. You'll never pay off your mortgage. And there's a few people of the older generation whom I've talked to who think, no, no, they, they got to make your loan payment so you'll eventually pay it off. And I'm like, no, not, no, no. They're, if you were making the minimum payment, you might never pay off that credit card. You might never pay off that loan. And I, I look at some of these these old, these old people, these old people I know, and they're like, yeah, here we are 10 years later. We still owe as much as we did when we got the loan. And I'm like, yeah, because um, you've only been making the minimum payment the last 10 years, and then you hear, oh, but they up, they load all the interest up front. I'm like, no, you still owe as much in interest as you did when you started. You haven't paid any interest, you haven't paid any principal, and you're still at where you started when you got that loan. And I think it would be if they just stopped the interest from accruing on student loans and said pay back what you can when you can. I think that would be a start if they can't bring themselves to outright forgive. Just say, okay, pay back the principal whenever you can. There will be no interest accrued from here on out. If they have to, if the conservatives have to have their moral win, then I, that would be a compromise I think most of us could live with. Just pay the interest back when you can, no interest on top of it. No 
compounding interest, no nothing. Because inflation is going to inflate the student loans away anyway. If uh, if this transitory inflation that's been happening keeps happening. I mean, reading books, that's the best way to educate yourself. Not going to, not spending thousands of dollars on classes. Reading books, that's how you educate yourself. And really learning to present your ideas to other people and have a, a meaningful conversation with someone. Because a lot of people out there are avid readers, but they don't ever talk with anybody about what they've read or what they've learned. And that is, that's where real personal growth and development happens. And that's what you're paying for when you go into a classroom. And if you're having a relationship with the community around you and you can find like a couple like minded people, doesn't matter who they are or what their station in life is, then college is kind of a moot point. I know that that's just my thought on that Bloomberg quiz and hit that subscribe button and I hope you guys all have a great evening.